Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, I'm sorry about the last week that I couldn't uh, attend or make a class for the first week. But it's okay. We cover uh, chapter 1 today, which is the introduction to polymer for PST 104, which is for code of basic natural rubber processing. For chapter 1, it's more uh, you, uh, at the end of this chapter, you should be able to define what is polymer, describe the classification and source of polymer, and finally to explain the usage of polymer. Basically, this chapter is introduction of overall of polymer technology or what you will learn in uh, three years of this program. Okay, so this is some of the illustrations of polymer in daily life. If you can see, uh, this is very common, which is the plastic bottle which is you uh, frequently see in our uh, daily life that plastic uh, polymer bottle can be converted into other product. As we know that polymeric material can be re very useful despite of being a um, pollutant or pollution to our uh, environment with the recycle of uh, eight water bottles into a shredded uh, flake and melted into a pellet Converted into a uh, extruded uh, yarn can produce uh, a piece of a knitted cut soon into a shirt. Okay, so this is some of the introduction of polymer. So, uh, polymeric material, uh, although it is very hard to decompose, but it can be recycled or can be reused for other purposes. Okay, so bear in mind, whenever you go to this uh, program, uh, from time to time, uh, our, um, uh, what we call that, our colleague, our family member, our friend will ask about what is polymer, or how, why the polymer uh, become, uh, what we call, uh, harmful to our environment. You need to educate them what is uh, polymer actually about and how polymer can ease our uh, daily life and can be con uh, can we can control the pollution. Uh, we are controlling the uh, by managing the waste of polymer itself. Okay, so other polymer types of material. Here, some of uh, illustration we have here is play doh. It's, it is made from polymeric material. We have uh, here a yarn, uh, nylon uh, yarn, which is made from polymeric material. Pin. Any type of paint is made from polymer-based material, okay? Uh, and then we have some sort of uh, textile. Textile, although some sort of the textile may produce uh, using 100% cotton, but as we know, cotton will be shrink over time when we wash uh, frequently. So in uh, current trends of uh, textile technology, they will implement some sort of the uh, polymeric material to prevent uh, shrinkage, to reduce the cost of, uh, or to, to, to reduce the usage of cotton material to make a clothing material. And then we have a rain cool for, uh, to protect yourself from um, rainy days, okay. And then we have a colorant over here, any types of colorant more likely is made from uh, polymer-based material. And then we have a food pack packaging. Usually you see the water bottle. Eventually in uh, semester five, you will learn about the plastic fabrication. Uh, that code, you will learn how to produce uh, vast types of uh, polymer packaging and polymer types of uh, manufacturing, especially plastic fabrication in our daily life. And then we have automotive, including uh, this one is um, bought a, a luxury yash, uh, which is uh, coated with a uh, polymeric spin and then we have interior is made from polymeric material to reduce the width of the floating devices as for example this one is called the boat, uh, the, the luxury yash and some uh, aeroplane and automotives uh, other than that is uh, interiors of the cars, mobile and etc. And this one is food. Okay, the interesting part of food, any carbohydrate, we also consider as polymeric material. Okay, because the backbone structure of the carbohydrate is a repetitive unit of the carbon structure, also known as a uh, polymer. Okay, uh, including glucose and etc. 
Okay, the definition is polymer. What is polymer actually? Okay, polymer come from the word of two words. The first one is poly, it means many or the repetiting, repetiting units. Okay, and then mer is a unit. Okay, or parts. Okay, so polymer is a many parts. What part is it? Is it is a some substance of matter consisting of large, a very large molecule or macromolecule composed of many repetiting subunits. So this unit or this part repetitive itself and producing a polymer. So actually, the structure of polymer is not that complex, but it having a uh, long branching or a uh, huge number of um, repetiting units. Okay, so. Other than that, we call a monomer. Monomer is a single unit or the single parts of the uh, chemical structure. With a polymerization, we tie it together, it will produce a polymer. Okay, so the repeating units of monomer called shears. A single unit of monomer with a polymerization process will tie the monomers together and we call it polymer. Okay, so the illustration is very simple. Later on, you will take the polymer chemistry and you will learn about uh, more detail on the polymerization uh, process, etc. and each of the types of polymer. So you don't need to worry uh, about that. Some example. Here, we have polyethylene is made up of repeated unit of ethylene monomer. Okay, nothing much to worry. This one is just some interaction. Ethylene, we have a CH2 and CH2 structure with double bond tie them together. Okay, with polymerization, the repetiting units of the ethylene will be tied together, breaking the backbone, uh, sorry, the double bond, producing a single bone and tie all the CH2 structure together. Okay, and you can simply uh, draw this ethylene structure with CH2, CH2 with the N is a uh, integer the number of repetitive unit or we call a very large integer okay uh, the integer uh, or the repetitive numbers of the backbone structure will contribute in molecular weights of the polymeric matter itself okay so this is ethylene the monomer and then we have a polyethylene called a polymer from the repetitive unit of ethylene with polymerization, produce a polymer of polyethylene. Okay, with the assist of polymerization process to make a polymer. Okay, this is R we use as a uh, what you call that the end groups of the uh, polyethylene or the polymer itself to indicate the numbers of integer. Okay. The repetitive unit. Okay, the definitions. Okay, so, uh, previous slide I did mention about the end group, the repetitive unit, the degree of polymerization. The end group, a constitutional, uh, constitutional unit that is extremity of a macromolecule or oligomer molecule. For example, end group for polyprenol are H or OH for different types of uh, polymeric material having a different end groups. Okay, and then we have a repetitive unit, the groups of atoms that is derived from the monomer and repeat through a polymer, also known as monomeric unit. For example, polyvinyl chloride is made with repetitive units of vinyl chloride. Okay, for example, previously last slide I did mention about polyethylene. The repetitive units is ethylene. Okay, so. Repeated units of ethylene producing a polyethylene. And then we have a degree of polymerization, the value of monomer unit linked to form a polymer change. Okay, this degree of polymerization will produce different types of polymer or different densities of the polymer. For example, polyethylene, uh, from ethylene converting into a polyethylene. And polyethylene have a different types of uh, different uh, molecular weight. We have low density, higher density, very low density, medium density, etc. So the degree polymerization 
also play a significant role in defining a polymer itself. And then classifications of polymer. Polymer are broadly classified into, okay, we have two types of uh, classification. The first one, synthetic polymer. Okay, this is very common that you see. Obtained by polymerization of petroleum based of raw material, materials such as polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, etc. Okay, this is the uh, most material that we use in our daily life. And then we ha also have a natural polymer. It is obtained from different renewable resources such as a cotton, rubber, silk, wool, starch, and cellulose. This one is not a man-made but it is naturally made in our environment. And then we use it and combine with other polymer to, uh, to produce a final product. Okay, some uh, difference of the natural and synthetic polymer. Example of natural and synthetic polymer. Natural polymer are made by living organisms. You need to remember this. So either DNA, DNA is made from living uh, organisms and then rubber is made from the uh, rubber tree and then cellulose, for example, is made from any um, plant that have a cellular structures uh, producing cellulose in this case is uh, sugarcane and then wool is made from a uh, sheep itself okay and then we have a synthetic polymer are made by chemical reaction in lab so this one is a main made in lab so we produce a nylon polyester teflon coating for example nastic uh, pen uh, is made from teflon material epoxy material for frame and a coating and then, uh, the classification of polymer can be cl classified according to a different criteria. Okay, this is the five classification of polymer. The first one is classification based on source and then monomer composition, polymer structure, thermal processing behavior, and finally, on process itself. So we will go through each of these classification of polymer. Based on source, okay, we have natural polymer okay it is contains of cellulose lignin such as uh, natural rubber itself natural rubber consists of uh, cellulose and lignin in their structure okay uh, other than that we have nucleic acid dna and rna and then we have modified natural um, uh, rubber or polymer itself we have a cellulose acetate styrene butyrene rubber or we call it sbr and then also we have a synthetic polymer okay we have polyethylene polystyrene polyamide polyurethane but bear in mind this is not the only polymer available in uh, industry or the market or our daily life it is uh, much more than this but this is some of the common uh, polymeric material that is easily available in our daily life and then a synthetic polymer mostly uh, from a petroleum. I did mention again and again. Okay, synthetic polymer made from petroleum. But how it is derived, for example, it's from the ethylene structure with additional of Br2 oxygen, bromine, uh, bromide oxygen, uh, gas bromide, okay, bromide gas. We produce uh, ethylene dibromide. Okay, and then with uh, existence of oxygen, we have ethylene oxide. With the ethylene oxide, we convert into a polymer. We call it PEO, polyethylene oxide. With alkyl phenol, we have non-organic detergent. With ammonia, NH3, we produce ethanol amines. And then with alcohol, we have glycol ether. With water, we have ethylene glycol. With further oxidation, we have ethylene glycol. And then uh, we have uh, uh, hydrochloric acid to produce uh, ethyl chloride. Polymerization of ethylene will produce either LDPE, HDPE, or EPR. Okay. And then we have an um, uh, additional of vinyl acetate structure to produce a PVA, polyvinyl acetate, or PVC, polyvinyl chloride. And then we have chlorine gas to produce uh, ethylene dichloride with additional of hydrochloric acids. We have trichloroethylene and uh, per, uh, perchloroethylene. 
and then we have vinyl chloride or we call it PVC polyvinyl chloride copolymer with a benzene gas we will produce ethylene benzene with addi uh, additional of our hydrogen gas we produce a styrene structure and with this styrene structure we produce synthetic rubber such as polystyrene high impact polystyrene uh, acronated butylene styrene styrene butylene rubber and styrene butylene styrene okay so basically this is some of the illustration of synthetic polymer being derived from the polymer as uh, from the petroleum based material and then uh, classification based of monomer composition itself okay here we have two types of uh, composition which is the homo and copolymer homo polymer is a polymer repeated from one type of monomer so previously i did mention about the polymer polymer is a repetitive unit okay it can be repeated by itself or it can be repeated from two or more types of monomer. If it repeated itself, it called a homopolymer. If it uh, repeated with two or more types of monomer, it called a copolymer. Okay, so it's very easy. Okay. And then classification based on polymer structure. Okay, polymer structure basically we have a linear branches and network. Linear, no branching other than the uh, pendant group. Pendant group is not uh, considered as a, a branch, okay, associated with the polymer. And then we have branch structure. From the backbone structure, we have a branch uh, unit. Polymer chain emanates from core of polymer structure unit. And then we have a network which is, which is very complex but very strong material. Linear or branch polymer chains are joined together by covalent bonds. First one, polymer with low density network, we call it elastoma. Polymer with high density network, we call it a thermoset. And then a classification on thermal processing behavior. Okay. Uh, for thermoplastic, the linear and branch long chain of molecule are held together by relatively weak van der Waal forces. With these weak uh, van der Waal forces can be break out uh, and can be recycled okay when you uh, introduce a heat this wonder wall forces will be uh, break out and you can have a molten polymer and can you can uh, convert into other types of material uh, other types of final product sorry example of thermoplastic such as a commodity plastic of polyethylene polyvinyl chloride and etc and second one we have a thermoset okay Opposite from the thermoplastic, a high density network close structure of molecular by strong chemical bonding takes place during molding under application of heat and pressure. And thermoset cannot be recycled but lead to char or degradation. So if you tend to uh, introduce a high temperature to that thermoset, it eventually will be uh, degraded and convert into a char. Example of thermoset is a phenol formaldehyde and epoxy. Okay. Finally, the classification based on process itself. Okay. Here you don't need to worry much about this. It will be covered vastly in uh, polymer chemistry. Okay. Basically, we have two types of process. The first one is step growth polymerization. Stepwise intermolecular chemical reaction that produce polymer and need step growth monomer. Okay. So. Uh, Whereas uh, for chain growth polymerization, rapid intermolecular chemical reaction that produce a polymer need a chain growth monomer. So if uh, you want to produce uh, a polymer uh, itself, you need to know what types of process that will involve so that you can pick types of a monomer. So either you need a, a step growth monomer or chain growth monomer. Okay. Source of polymer. Okay, so basically, source of polymer uh, itself, uh, there is two uh, in our industry. The first one is petrol-based industry. Okay, from the crude oil itself, that kita tengok uh, minyak mentah tu kan? Okay, so from the crude oil itself, we go to the, uh, we collect uh, crude oil from the ocean of the crude oil tanker, go to oil refinery, and then, 
we go to the boiler. The crude oil will go to the boiler to separate different types of uh, uh, gases and oil. Okay, uh, distillation tower we separated uh, different densities of the oil and gases at a uh, higher temperature, which is three hundred seven fifty degrees Celsius. We produce heavy oil and asphalt. Okay, here we have heavy oil for ships and thermal power plant. Asphalt for material to pave roads. Okay, yang kita tempat dia buat jalan tu semua tu, ah uh, inilah yang digunakan heavy oil tu. And then uh, at two hundred forty to three hundred fifty degrees Celsius, we produce a light oil fuel for diesel car. So banyak kenderaan uh, macam four by four lorry etc. Kita pakai uh, light oil ni. Inilah. Okay. And then at uh, temperature of 170 to 150 degrees Celsius, we have kerosene and jet fuel. Kerosene for oil heater and jet fuel for fuel for plane. And then from 35 to 180 degrees Celsius, we have naphtha and gasoline. Okay, naphtha is main material for plastic and chemical textile. Okay, here it is polymeric material being produced. Also, at this temperature, we also have a gasoline fuel for car. Okay, and finally, the light weights of the uh, crude oil produce a gas we call a petroleum gas or fuel for taxis. Uh, here is the LPG gas. Okay, so basically, this is the illustration um, the distillations of the crude oil into a different types of oil uh, for different type of usage. Okay. Source of polymer. All the widely known petrochemical company have been cooperated with our national uh, petroleum, which is a Petronas, and made Malaysia as one of the promising investment in petrochemical industry. And uh, by doing this, it offer vast uh, job opportunities. Other uh, company that involved in this uh, petrochemical company, such as uh, BSF. Uh, Petro, Petronas, Chemical, and then we have Dow, BP, Kanika, Shell, Torre, Eastman, uh, Idimetsu, uh, Polyplastic. Okay, the, basically this is uh, the industry related to the, uh, to the thermoplastic industry or petrochemical industry. Okay, and then we sh other than that, we also have a rubber industry. Okay. Malaysia is rich natural polymer resources such as natural rubber. So as I mentioned earlier, some of the polymer is, is naturally occur in our environment. Okay, so we plant, we culture a rubber tree, okay, and then we harvest a latex for a uh, natural rubber. Okay, from a uh, natural rubber, we can convert into a different type of product such as a deep product of a glove, balloon uh, and also uh, this one illustration of the pillow or the what you call the bats latex bat okay industry related to these uh, uh, types of uh, material such as carex supermax hatalega and cell shurab shurab is also have in police and then and we have a top glove and also offer a good uh, job opportunities okay next uh, polymer application. So basically, previous uh, slide I did mention about the types of material, how it's made. So here we go to the polymer applications of each material. For polymer application uh, for thermoplastic or composite, usually we use in automotive industry, half household item, industrial item, aerospace industry, and medical application. Okay. For terms of job opportunities, you can penetrate either in Petronas, Exxon, UMW, uh, Lemaga Geta Malaysia or Malaysia Rubber Board, Shell, SMW, Havik, Torre, Mardek, Unimedical, Serum, Show Rubber, Continental, Produa, Top Glove, Titan and Cell and Mardek itself. So basically, this is some of the uh, ideas of the industry that you can go through uh, that offer a good uh, job opportunity after you graduating. But it is not limited to this uh, type of industry that I listed here. 
it might, you might go overseas industry, okay, uh, or any other um, small or medium industry, okay. Here is the general overview of rubber processing. So because of this uh, code, uh, mainly focus on natural rubber processing, this is the general overview of rubber processing that you will go through uh, this, whole, this whole semester. The processing of natural rubber or synthetic rubber uh, involved in natural rubber, tapping rubber tree to collect rubber latex and cup lumps of the rubber field also, a synthetic depolymerization process of synthetic rubber such as polyisoprene at plantation. And then we have rubber block or rubber bales, the raw material co collected from rubber tree. Or after polymerization process for synthetic rubber or now ready to be processed to become rubber block or rubber bale. We have, uh, might probably we go to the Kilan Getak Walikatil, Marek Processing and TBE Petronas. Okay. Manufacturing in the factory to uh, be end products, the rubber blocks of bale will be supplied to the manufacturing factories such as tire industry, goods and mechanical product to produce uh, the product of rubber. Many steps will be involved in this uh, industry to produce uh, final uh, or end products uh, such as the Continental, Goodyear and Top Glove. And then we also go through some of the testing, involved in this testing, and product will be tested for their physical and mechanical properties so that it will comply with rules and regulation and is ready to be marketed and uh, used for consumer. And this involves the uh, National Rubber Board or GM, and then uh, Serum and Umbra itself. Also, some of the R&D, uh, research and development to develop new material or product or to improve the product available following the current trend. So, uh, be uh, basically general overview of rubber processing. For every step, there will be different roles of different job opportunities. So, each of the process offer different job opportunities. Okay. Natural rubber become, uh, comes from natural resources, which is the source of rubber tree. Synthetic rubber is man-made, uh, comes from non-renewable resources of petroleum oil. Polyisoprene is the example of synthetic rubber, which process, possess similar properties like natural rubber. This subject, PST 104, will teach about how to process natural rubber that comes from rubber tree into block rubber so that it can be supplied to other industries such as tire industry to make a product of tire. And then a rubber block, we call it SMR or the standard Malaysian rubber blocks. The example company of SMR such as Marek Processing, Kilang Getah, Kuala Ketil and etc. And I hope, I do really hope uh, we can have a visit to industry. but. For current uh, situation of this pandemic, might probably we will have a visual, uh, visual, virtual, what you call it, visit to industry, and um, might probably me and Mr. Mazina we try com to communicate with industry to to allow you um, to have a visual uh, a visit to uh, related industry. Okay, that's, that's all for this chapter. If you have any question, uh, please, please, and please ask me in uh, groups so that I can respond to you. And I hope to see you soon. By then, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Thank you.